When I first met Estevan, it must have been right here in downtown LA. I didn't have any idea that, you know, he was a photographer. Um, you know, these gangsters showed up at my business and I just remember when they left, Estevan came up to me and he said, hey, if you ever have any trouble down here, just hit me up. I'm born and raised in LA. I, I was born in St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. And the, around the time when I was growing up, it seemed like it was the beginning of a lot of different, what they call subcultures now. But, uh, you know, we were, we were there when like punk rock first started, when skateboarding started, you know, surfing was big and, you know, on the West side and uh, hip hop was just starting. So we got to see all that come as something brand new and it was like uh it was brand new and and people were just trying to figure it out and everybody thought that all that shit was going to be a fad in the beginning it was just like you know when we were growing up there was classic rock soul and uh like funk you know so those are like the the musics of the 70s uh, in the and then there was the old soul in the 60s and the old rock but going into the 80s you know then punk rock started hip hop started you know skateboarding became real big and it was always the you know like really hardcore aggressive music and if you ever been to a punk rock show it was, you know really hardcore and aggressive in the beat in the in the pit i mean and then if you'd go to a hip hop show you're either going to get in a, a fight or you're going to be close to one. So there was always an element of danger and all these different, uh, you know, things that were going on when we were coming up. And um, it was cool to see and to be a part of it all in the, and being in the beginning. And then uh, later on, like in the 90s is, is when, you know, everything really kicked off and like a whole new wave, you know, it's a, a new decade and, and new shit started popping up. So, you know, there was like the the streets were going buck wild with the gangs and, you know, hip hop was at an all time high and punk rock was, it seemed like it was like fading out a little bit. And then uh, that's when I started taking photos and I was just taking photos of stuff I was around or the scene that I was in and, and the scene that I was in was I had bought an uh, Impala in 1989 uh, around 91 I started fixing it up as a lowrider and then I got the job with uh, House of Pain in 92 tour managing and so my dad was a photographer and him and his wife had an extra camera and they're like hey you should take this with you out there you know on the road with you on tour or take it in the streets you know when you're in East LA building your ride and going to all these functions for low riding. So I just started shooting little by little here and there. And um, I was shooting from the inside. In 2012, we had done a couple collaborations, one with Street League, which was a new skateboarding league for street skaters. And then we did Thrasher King of the Road. And I wanted to continue to do collaborations. So I talked to Estevan, he was super down. And then he surprised me by wanting to use the LA hands, which I already knew about as an image, but has become, you know, iconic ever since then. And here we are, you know, 10 years later doing it again. We chose the LA hands because that's like my, my trademark, my go to, you know, for it's been uh, I, I took that picture in 94, like right down the street, a couple blocks away and uh, at first, it wasn't really like that big of a deal to me. It's just like, you know, yeah, it's cool. You know, some a girl throwing up L.A., you know, gang member in L.A. And I was thinking like, you know, it's no big deal, you know. I never thought of it back then, but it pretty much represents, you know, our city with just one photo. You know, you can just like, you throw that photo up there and, and that, that says it all for for me for our culture so in 2012 we did a chorizo pizza and it was estevan's choice you know we always have whoever we're collaborating with basically as a guest chef even though they're not back here making 
the pizza physically, they come up with the concept. So we want it to be Mexican. So chorizo, cilantro, chopped white onions, um, jalapenos. And based on what I remember, you know, he told me that he came up with the pizza because he used to love to eat at La Reina, which was a Mexican spot across the street. This old lady was out there every day making tacos. And one day he brought a taco over to El Pizza Nista and put it right on a slice and folded it and ate it. And that became an idea for the pizza. So that's what we did. There was a place across the street called La Reina. It was my favorite taco spot. I'd go there every night and get because we worked down here for over 20 years. So I would either go there and get tacos or we'd come here and get pizza. And at that time, uh, one of my friends was like, hey, you want to go get pizza or tacos? And I was like, let's go get both. So I went over there, got a piece of uh, or a chorizo taco, and came over here and got a slice of pizza, put the taco on the pizza and started eating it. And they're like, man, what are you doing? I was like, I'm having both, you know. And my little excuse was I'm half Mexican, half Italian. So it worked. Right before COVID, I ran into Estevan. I hadn't seen him in a while. And uh, he looked amazingly fit, you know. And I was asking him, what have you been doing? And he said, oh, I just stopped eating meat and cheese and bread. And, um, you know, recently I found out, you know, in talking to him that he had some health problems. And to the point where... You know, doctors were like, we're going to have to amputate your feet. So, um, you know, he made a real conscious decision to go vegan. And uh, so this time around, we did a vegan chorizo pizza with Abbott's Butcher from Costa Mesa. And we used Miyoko's Creamery vegan mozzarella. And Jared from Taco Vega made the pickled jalapenos that Estevan loves. And that's what the pizza is made of. And it turned out amazing. So, you know, when I first made the choice of going vegan, it was kind of like my friends were always talking shit, you know, like, eh, you don't want to party, you don't want to eat nothing. And I was like, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, like I want to walk with my feet, you know, sorry. One of the things that I noticed about Esteban as I got to know him and see him around town was that he's always helping someone, you know, and Typically, it would be someone off the streets, you know, someone that most of us just kind of walk by. And the thing is, there was always a relationship. It wasn't like it was the first time he helped these people, you know, which I always really admired. And the cool thing, too, about this collaboration this time around is that Esteban said, I would like all the proceeds that come from the sale of the pizza, my shirt, whatever desserts, whatever we make. I want you to donate it to no us without you. One thing that my mom and my dad always taught me is like, you know, just respect people and like, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. And, you know, my mom was all my mom came from her background was a nurse. So she was always into helping people. And my dad was like real hands on in the streets. And um, they they always kind of just uh, raised me to. to you know, don't be a taker, you know, be a giver, you know, so I would always, uh, you know, the more that I, the more that I started like uh, making money and, and having positions where I could help other people, the more I started helping people, like the more I started doing, the more I started helping people. And, um, you know, I, I just think it it's uh, better to, you know, for me, it feels better to give than to take, you know, so when I have it, I give it, you know. <laughs>